So what we're gonna, going to talk about is our last thing for the zero chapter. And just to let you know about the zero chapter, there are assumptions of things that you know and you may not know because you may not have covered because you didn't take a full eighth grade course last year. So if you come across something that you're like, I don't know how that, what that's supposed to be, the zero chapter has most of those ideas in it. So we only covered a few of the lessons so you can go back and go through the zero chapter. For example, there's volume in here. There's surface area in here. We're not going to cover that. There's some background information on statistics. You may have to go back and review mean, median, and mode, those sorts of things. But that's what the zero chapter is, is if you're not sure about something, go back and check the zero chapter to see if there's some background information. And just remember that the um, standardized testing you're taking at the end of the year is math 8 material, not algebra material. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the, or your note title would be four step uh, problem solving plan. Now, I'm getting myself confused about how many notes we've taken, so I'm going to make like a big um, table of contents and put it up on the board so make sure that we all have the same uh, topics on our table of contents. Your page numbers are going to be different. Your dates should be the same as what I write up there, okay? Because I'm forgetting what number it is in my head. All right, so four-step problem-solving plan today is the 23rd. So remember, all of that goes in your table of contents. In addition, you're going to give this um, your page number. So we're going to go on the even page, and that way on the odd page you can do the homework, okay? So what's our four steps? Number one. Understand the problem. So let's talk about what would you need to do to understand the problem. So what would be the first thing you would need to do to understand the problem? Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you need to read it. In fact, I would say a minimum of two times. My first time I read through a problem, I just get, I read through everything that it says and I get the gist of what the problem's all about. The second time I read it, that's when I start picking apart what it told me, okay? So a couple things that you can do after you read it is you might identify the, inf the given information. Now, Sometimes not all the given information is used. That's okay. And then once we identify the given information, you need to identify what you are solving for. Now, I'm not bringing this information from anywhere unique or special. I'm literally pulling it straight out of the lesson so you can read through the lesson again. Okay, so identify what you are solving for. So you're not, you're not writing anything. You're just in your brain, verbally, you're coming up with these ideas. Once you have read through the problem, you have an idea of what the problem is about, and you know what you know, and you know what you're solving for, that's when you plan the solution. So what do you need to do in order to solve this problem? So number one, this is a phrase you're going to hear from me all the time. And if you don't do this, when we have word problems, so hint, hint, for variety's quiz, if you don't do this, you lose a quarter of the points available for that question. There's four major things that I'm looking for. This is the first. Define your variable. And you select a variable and describe what it represents. Okay. 
define your variable, you select a variable, and describe what it represents. Now, you need to be pretty clear. If all you write is x equals number symbol, that's not very clear when really what it was is the number of hours she worked last week. You need to be very explicit, okay? So you're solving a problem about um, how much money did... You basically take the question that you're solving for and turn that into your variables definition. How much did Ling pay per square feet or square foot for tile? You would say x equals money paid per square foot of tile. So notice I can use abbreviations. That's okay. That's your number one thing is you must define your variable. I have to say this is the first book that I see that is highlighted. They're using my language. Finally, somebody gets me. Okay. Quarter of the points that I'm looking for right there. Okay. We're going to use that variable to come up with an, an expression or an equation to solve. So then you get my next word. Translate the expression slash equation. Okay, translate. So that means actually write in math what the problem says. So no words allowed, that's why we have to choose a variable. And every word that was given in the problem that's going towards our equation is either going to become a number, an operation, a symbol like equals, a variable. Right? In math terms only. Okay? So that's your plan. You come up with an equation. That's your next step. That's the next part that you get credit on. All right, I'm, I'm switching screens. Step three. Now that you've got this great expression or you've got this great equation, now you're going to solve the problem. And you're going to use all your important math skills that you've learned doing opposite or inverse operations on both sides until you isolate your variable to solve. So I'm going to just write isolate the variable. Using, and technically what you've been using are math properties. If the inverse of adding is subtracting, then you're going to show me subtraction on both sides. That's called subtraction property of equality. Okay? If you need to divide both sides because there's something being multiplied by your variable, you're using division property of equality. So you're using math properties all along. You may not have labeled them as such, but that's really what you're doing when you're solving problems. So isolate the variable using math properties. That's really what it comes down to. Okay? And then last... And this is the one kids don't like to do. Check your answer. Okay. So, key things here. Is the answer reasonable? Does it make sense? We do age problems. I'm not sure if we'll do them this year, but we have in the past. And I have, I cannot tell you how many times on a test, I have had a student give me an answer where the child is older than the parent. Or the parent would have been about five when the child was born. Ew. Okay. That isn't reasonable. No. Bad. Naughty. 
mm, mm, don't do that. Okay, that's what I mean. And and people just or you're talking about something and you get a negative answer. People just leave it as a negative answer when it's how many pounds of potatoes are there and they have negative thirty two. What? That's not reasonable. That's the absence of thirty two pounds of potatoes. So you need to check it for reasonableness. But here's the other one. Plug. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's use a right, good word. Plug's not a good word. Substitute answer into equation to check your math. That's very important. Sometimes you just make an error with calculations and you need to fix it. That's your four-step plan. That's what I expect to see when you're working on your homework tonight. Thank you.